we're in a topic of why Christmas. Why Christmas, that's our theme for Advent season, why Christmas, which will actually culminate on uh, Christmas Eve. The real question, why Christmas, is we're asking, why did Jesus come? Why in the world did Jesus come? Well, last week we began by saying that Jesus, at the end of his, end of his life, the day before he dies on the cross, he's standing before Pilate, and, and Pilate mentions that he's... He's taunting Jesus, and Jesus mentions that if his kingdom were of this world, his kingdom would, they would fight, but his kingdom's not of this world. And he said, oh, you're right. He said, then you are a king. That's what Pilate said. And then Jesus responds, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason was I born. Of course, he was born king of the Jews, but that's not what he goes on to say. He says, watch what he says. And for this I came into the world, you expect him to see, to reign over the earth, but instead, he says, to testify to the truth. We live in a world where they don't know what the truth is. I mean, truth is a sliding scale. What's true for you may not be true for me. What's true for me may not be true for you. And so it's no wonder that our courts cannot make any decisions. You get a jury, and there's no absolute standard of what right and wrong is. And so for one person, well, that was right, and the other person, that's wrong. They can't come to a conclusion. And so we, we live in a land that seems like there's a lot of injustices that go on. Jesus said, I've come to testify to the truth. We, we looked last time through the Gospel of John, all the references of truth that Jesus mentioned, and the truth will set you free. People today are so bound by oppression and everything else because they don't know the truth. Jesus himself said personally, I am the truth. Now watch what he says here. I'm not going to repeat the whole last, last week's message. Everyone on the side of truth. There are sides in this, folks. You are on one side, you're with Jesus and the truth, or you're on the other side and you don't know Jesus and you don't know the truth. That's where it is. Some people call it saved and lost. All right? Some, some people call it born again and not born again. Jesus said, you're on one side or the other. You're either on the side of truth with him or you're not. He came into the world to reveal the truth. And Pilate's answer, remember last week? Uh, what is truth? Today the question would be, uh, come on, is there really any truth? Staring him right in the face. Whoa. Face to face with the truth and trying to ignore it. You cannot ignore it. The Bible says, we are condemned already because we have not believed the only begotten Son of God. We have not believed the truth. Part of last week we talked about the Bible being the truth. When we proclaim the word of God, we are proclaiming the truth. Which leads me today. I just want to zero in on three verses today. Last week we were jumping all the way through the Gospel of John. This week we're going to look at just three verses in the, the Gospel of Mark. And, and it says, why did he come? The disciples were asking, uh, two of them anyway, John and, and James, his brother, were asking Jesus if they could have a certain request. And the request was, in your kingdom, can we sit on one side of you and the other? We want to be in the, the positions of authority. We want to be great in the kingdom. And uh, Jesus said, well, well, wait a second. You don't really understand what you're, you're asking for. Because he said, on earth, okay, in the world, those who, who are rule, they lord it over people. But he said, not so with you. And then we pick up this. He says, whoever wants to be great among you must be servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be slaves of all. I call this, if you, if you wish to become great, you must become small. I want you to say what's in the red there with me, okay? If you wish to be great, you must become small. Isn't that right? That's what Jesus says. You're, you're going to, instead of trying to become the top, you've got to go to the bottom. 
This is what he says. For even the Son of Man, isn't that what he did? It tells us in Philippians chapter 2, even though being in the very form of God, so that being God was not something he had to grasp at. He was already there. All right? He humbled himself and became made in the fashion as a man. He became man. He humbled himself so that he experienced death, even the death on the cross. That's what Christmas is about. That's why he came. The Son of Man came into the world, as he's going to go on to say, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but, he, but to be served and give his life a ransom for many. He did come, but the first thing he tells us here in this statement is, I want to, in my definition of why I came, tell you what I did not come for. Sometimes when we define something, we have to first say what it is not, and then we say what it is. All right? That's exactly what he's doing. He said, I did not come to be served. Some of you remember from the years of hearing the, the Christmas story that the wise men came from the east and they came to, to, to Jerusalem and they said, where is he born king of the Jews? Why would they have gone to Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. That's where the palace was. That's where the king would rule from on a throne. So they were coming to find the king of Israel. So they go to the capital. They go to where he should be but where is Jesus? Jesus isn't in Jerusalem. He didn't come with a silver spoon in his mouth. You know where Jesus was? Jesus was in Bethlehem. Where was Jesus? In a manger. Well, where was Jesus? In the feeding trough. Where, where was he? He was in a stinky barn. He didn't come to be served. Those, if he had been born royalty, there would have been servants everywhere waiting hand and foot on him. And instead, God has to send an angel to shepherds out in the field say, hey, listen, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Go, go find him. So as soon as the angels are gone, they said, we better go find out what this is. They take off, they come, and they find baby Jesus, what? Lying in a manger. He didn't come to be served. That's really important. But to serve. To serve. He came to serve. Now when I think of this, I think of that occasion where it says in John chapter 13, having loved his own, he, he, he's about to have the, the Lord's Supper that night, of having loved his own who are in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. That's what blows my mind right there. The full extent of his love. How does he show it? Well, because these guys have been coming in for the dinner and they've never, you know, they've been going through the streets of Jerusalem, dusty, dirty, dung-filled and everything else. It was a mess. They come in, their feet are filthy and they're dirty. And uh, the, the typical courtesy that you did was have one of your servants wash everybody's feet because they were dirty and smelly. No one had done that. The 12 disciples all come in. They're, they're piled in. Of course, there's food. They, they're piled in. And, and, and so Jesus, it says, having loved his own to show them the full extent of his love, he gets up, wraps a towel around his waist, takes a basin, and he goes and he washes the disciples' feet. I don't know what to compare that to today because you all wear shoes and you got socks and some of you use foot deodorant and, and you know, you, you know, so I don't know what to, I don't know what to compare this to, but perhaps I came to your door and said, oh, knock, knock, hey, I, I'm coming in and I got my brush. I said, I, I'd like to clean your toilets. <laughs> I know what you think, pastor's gone crazy. <laughs> I think that's pretty much what it's like. You know, when you have guests, you want to make everything in the house clean, right? You clean up everything. And that's one of the things you go check the bathroom. Hey, have you checked the bathroom? My wife said, have you checked your bathroom? Have you checked the bathroom? And, and so, why? We want it to be presentable. Jesus, to show the full extent of his love to his disciples, 
He takes the most menial task that if he had actually been in the palace as a king, a slave would have done that. He would have come in and he would wash the feet. He, he lowered himself to serve that which was beneath him. Don't forget, this is God coming to flesh. Washing the feet of his disciples. As lowly a job as you could get. I think the greatest rewards in heaven are not going to be given to those like the evangelists, you know, Billy Graham or pastors like myself. Or it's going to wind up being that person who faithfully served the Lord in the most menial task to make something happen great for the kingdom of God. Somebody behind the scenes in, a, in the sound booth. Somebody behind the scenes in a nursery. Somebody mopping a floor, you know, cleaning up a mess because some, well, some child got sick. Those are the people who's going to be great. Those who really, truly serve people. That's what Jesus is saying. If you want to be great in the kingdom, you've got to be small, do the menial tasks here on earth. He goes on and he says, not only did he come to serve, but he came to give. Christmas is about gifts, isn't it? Man, we, we, we exchanged gifts with family. It was fun. We had a great time with the family. And, and they, that Christmas is all about the Son of Man came to give a gift. And the gift was his own life. The gift was his life on the cross. John 3, 16, we know that verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus himself said, I lay down my life voluntarily. No one takes it from me. I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it back up. Jesus voluntarily gave his life. Christmas, why did he come? He came to give his life. There is a sense in which he was born to die. You say, well, we're all born to die. I mean, come on, none of us are getting out of this alive, right? That's because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He was sinless. The Bible says he did no sin. He knew no sin. There was no sin in him. He was a spotless lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. and All these things. He had no sin, so he should not have died. But he was born to die to give his life. He was born. He knew it from the time he was born. It was that, that this was his mission in life that he was going to go to the cross and die. We talk about, theologically, the passive work of Christ. The passive work was just simply laying down on the cross, being nailed to the cross. He died. The active obedience of Christ, there's the passive obedience, the active was the time from which he was born till the time he sacrificed himself. He lived a perfect, righteous life so that he could be qualified to take your and my place. See, I can't take your place. I can't pay for your sins because I got my own to pay for. How could I pay for yours? Who's going to pay for mine? He had to be the qualified, sinless Savior who would voluntarily lay down his life and he was born to do that. Of the Virgin Mary, untainted with our corrupt nature, he was the sinless Son of God. So positively stated, he came to give his life as a ransom. It's an interesting word, a ransom, because a ransom implies a hostage. You and I were hostages. If you, if you know Christ, you were a hostage. At one point, you were a hostage to your sin and its consequences, your disobedience and its consequences, your failures and its consequences, your errors and its consequences, your trespasses and its consequences, your breaking and violating laws and its consequences. You are a hostage. You say, well, what's the consequences? Real simple. The wages of sin is death. You're a hostage to death. Hostage to death. You are hostage to justice because justice demands that the wage, the payment for your sin, for your wrong, all that you've done is death. We were hostages. Now the hostage, you know, you've seen all the movies where they, somebody takes a hostage, there is a ransom note, right? The ransom note, you owe. Hey, if you will pay 
$50,000, a million dollars. We will set the hostage free. The word ransom technically means the price, for pay, the price of payment to release the hostage. Wow. Now, most of the time, they want the money in cash, right? Unmarked bills. I guess now some of them are going to bitcoins. Some of you don't know what that is, but bitcoins... You know, it's an electronic version, uh, transmitting funds, and, and uh, we know the terrorists do that because it can't be traced and all that kind of thing. The bitcoins, all right? But there's always a payment. You've got to make a payment. The payment, the wages of sin, is death. So the payment in the Bible is death. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. The only way the hostage can be released is by a death payment. A death payment. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He was the sinless one. That, this is the purpose he came into the world. This is why, why Christmas? So that he could live the perfect life, be the perfect sacrifice to take a, and be the substitute for all who would believe in him. He came to give his life as the ransom. He, he's the ransom. So that we could be set free. That we could be set free. There is one God, there's lots of people. There is one meteor, one go-between, between all the people on planet Earth and the true and living God, that is the man, Christ Jesus. How does he mediate? Watch this. He gave himself as a ransom for all. He paid the price. I meant to bring up with me today a gift card and forgot to bring it up. But you know what a gift card is, don't you? You take and you pay money. You make a payment and it's put on the card. All right, it's put on the card. Now you give that card to someone and now they can use that to purchase whatever they want. Whatever they want, right? That's exactly what's going on here. Jesus paid the price. But like that gift card, you could have that. The ransom's been paid. But if you don't use the, the gift card, if you don't use it, the, you never get anything out of it, correct? Did you ever lose one? <laughs> you don't get anything out of it. If you lose it, you don't use it. Christ has already ransomed us. He's paid the price. But if you don't receive it, accept it, and use it in your life by believing on him, it is of no avail to you. You have to accept him, receive him, believe in him, and use that card. He gave himself a ransom for all. To give his life as a ransom for many, is what Jesus said, in that many is you. You're the one that has to use it. He's already done it. So why Christmas? To truth you. To serve you to gift you, to ransom you. Why? Why? Because he loves you. Isn't that amazing? God loves me. Why Christmas? Jesus came for all of these reasons. This brings me to what I really want to get to today. <laughs> My final thought on this whole passage is this. It says, for even. For even. This is a comparison. For even the Son of Man, okay, something's being compared to the Son of Man. What the Son of Man, Jesus Christ did, something is being compared to him, and I want to suggest that it is you. You are being compared to Jesus. And he says, listen, here's the comparison. Jesus died I mean, Jesus came to serve. He came to serve you. And you are to be a servant. And you are to be a slave if you want to be great. We are to serve like Jesus served. We are to give like Jesus gave. That's what Christmas is about. So in this Christmas season, I would like us to focus on serving, not being served. This is what I mean. 
We have Spudtacular Sunday today, right? What I bring in on Spudtacular Sunday, my spuds, and then if I stick around afterward, I'm going to have the opportunity to help put together bags for the people in our community who we don't even know. They're just going to come through our doors looking for some food this Saturday, and we'll have this already prepackaged and bagged. Why? Because I am serving. Jesus said, if you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. We are actually serving Jesus in the lowly way of hands-on so that on this Saturday, we can come here again and we can be the hands and feet of Jesus to serve our community as they come into our building on behalf of Open Door, and, and we are the ones, we distribute the food to those who are in need. Why Christmas? To serve. Why do we celebrate? To be serving, not be served, to serve others. Here's another little one we could do this week. Hey, we've got them packed in this week. Wednesday, going to Whispering Woods, we're going to sing and carol to those. Some of those never get out to church at all. But we're going to go there and we're going to minister. We're going to sing and try to brighten their day. Why? I am serving people in my community to serve, to serve. We're giving you opportunity to do even as the Son of Man, he served and gave his life a ransom for many. Oh, well, I want you to focus on giving, not on getting. I, notice, I know when you're small, it's about getting, Right? All the, what are you going to get for Christmas? Da, 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 da. But when you get a little older, it should be, what are you going to give for Christmas? It's about giving. Now, we're going to give you opportunity. Some of you have been involved already in the reverse Advent calendar, right? And the reverse Advent, you know, you've seen the, the Advent calendars in the, in the stores where you, you open it up and you get something out of it, right? You get something out of it. This is just the opposite. On that day, you put something into it. You put it into a box, and when we get that box filled, and listen, you don't have to do it every day. You can get, you can get one of the sheets out there right now today, and, and they're at the information center, and you can fill that whole box in one trip to the dollar store. <laughs> I know you can do it, but it's about giving, about giving. We got a mitten tree out there, okay? It's an opportunity for you to give. You just pick up some mittens, you put it on the mitten tree, gloves on that, that tree. There, there's a coat rack out there so that we can give to people who do not have a coat. It's giving. This is the season of giving. As I give to the person without a coat. Now, these are to be either new or slightly used, but cleaned coats. Because when we give, if you've done it unto the least of these, my brother has done as, as if you've done it to Christ. Would I give Jesus the junk in my life? Or do I want to give him the best in my life? Years ago when I was in, in a Bible college, we had mission barrels and you would throw your old things in it. And I couldn't quite figure that out. And then one day they, they came at chapel, they said, hey, well, listen, we don't want old junk in this. And they pulled out one that was a bikini and said, now come on, if you're not going to wear it, you think a missionary wife's going to wear this? <laughs> you don't give junk. You wouldn't give that to Jesus. We want to do the best we can here. Hey, listen, I believe it's this Friday. Am I right? Book club? Book club this Friday? And the book club this Friday, you can, you can give. This is cool. You get a children's storybook, and you get pajamas to go with it. And you come in, and you, you come to the book club, and I think the way it works this time around, because I haven't been to the book club with the, giving the children's storybooks, but you talk a little bit about that storybook, and then you have the gift, and, and it's going to go to children. This might be the only Christmas gift they get. This is why we have Christmas. Even as the Son of Man served and gave, even so, you, 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 you all of us, we are to serve and to give. And we can do that today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do want in this Advent season to be servants and givers. We don't want to squander what you've given us. We don't want to hoard it to ourselves. We want to give it and dispense it. We don't want to be so proud and arrogant and high-minded that we don't see those who are in need and prefer them 
as superior to ourselves and get down and wash their feet. Lord, put within us that spirit of Christmas that Jesus had when he came into the world to serve and to give. We pray for that, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Christmas is about serving. Christmas is about Christ. Come, thou long-expected Jesus. thoughts are very simple as Jesus came to serve and to give we too can find we, we, we can look for an opportunity it doesn't have to be here even through the church it's even better if it's not because then it's prompted from your heart and the spirit in your life and not because the pastor's maybe guilting you don't want to do that but but the, just to look for opportunity to serve and to give that is a spirit of Christmas. I do have a few announcements I want to share with you before we leave. The open door Christmas food bag prep is going to follow the worship service. And uh, the more that participate, the faster it goes. I think last time we did it in about 15 minutes. We prepped all those bags because so many stayed to help with that. Area 51. Area 51 is going to meet this evening. We're going to do painting, a painting party. And so we want you to stick around and come tonight, bring your friends. If you're in uh, in either uh, middle school or high school, please be a part of that. The Band of Brothers are going to meet at Pastor's Home tomorrow night. And then, of course, Whispering Woods is on Wednesday night. Uh, the Book Club is on Friday. And on Saturday, Men's Prayer Breakfast and the Open Door uh, Actual Distribution. That's a lot. I squeeze in the announcements in before the blessing. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are thrilled to be called by the Lord Jesus Christ to be one of his children. He's my brother, he's my savior, he's my Lord, he's my God. And Lord, as he has done, you would like us to do. And so Lord, we want to follow in his steps and be a people whose eyes are open to those who are in need and be willing to serve. And not just serve, but also to give. Open our eyes. We pray for this in Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful Lord's Day. Amen.